ADG Tech Tools, this is Ian Golden, and today I want to talk to you about buttons. Not just any buttons, though. I want to talk to you about how you play your buttons. Everyone's got buttons on their controller, and how you play them and the techniques you use can make a big difference in your performances. So today I'm going to give you a couple of tips and techniques on how you can play your buttons for super creative results in regular DJ sets and controllerism performances. Let's take a look. So the first thing I want to teach you is very important, and it's how you hit the button. You may see a lot of guys up there mashing away on the buttons, banging them, doing big hits and big space between their hand and the button. Great for showing the crowd that you're really into it and looking like you're about to break something, but it's not great for actually playing the notes on time because the distance between the transition or the action of the hit and the beginning of the hit is so great, there's a lot of margin for error. If you want to reduce that margin for error, you need to make sure you play the buttons as close to them as possible, moving only your fingers and not your wrists and not certainly your elbows. Now, if you really want to get into it and smash a button on the one, that's fine. You know, have fun. But if you're trying to be really tight and clean, you want to keep it close and really work the fingers. You want to train the fingers so each finger moves independently. You'll notice that on this finger, I've got this guy wiggling a little bit. You got to really try to train those fingers to independently move you can do stuff like that. Now, the next technique I want to tell you, or um, next technique I would like you to practice, is really hitting these buttons, any buttons, gently. So it's not so much of a whack. Again, there's a lot of force there, and there's a lot of muscle involved. I'd like it to be a little bit more dexterous. And the first exercise I'd like you to do is to just very, very gently Start doing quarter notes. Now, if you go to this video, there's some techniques on timing exercises. And it'll give you a few exercises to practice your timing. And it'll go through quarter notes, eight notes, sixteenths, and so on and so forth. And we'll have some more in the future. But for now, what I want you to focus on is technique. And technique is really important. So we're not banging the buttons. We're very gently practicing letting the finger fall. OK, cool. So once you've got that down, we're ready to move on to some basic um, rhythm techniques. Assuming that you can go ahead and play 16th notes and 8th notes and all the different patterns, you may want to start to work in some finger techniques that allow you to create some sounds. Now, the first technique I want to teach you is the two-fingered crab. If you're having a hard time doing 16th notes, then you might want to use two fingers. You might notice though that the sound is a little bit different. This creates kind of more of a staccato tone. And when put over a beat, it sounds something like this. So you might want to practice that for a while because it's a unique tone. When we're only dealing with cue points, we want to try to make that single cue point as expressive and as full of flavor as possible. So there's a difference in sound between and you can play around with that pull to kind of give it some unique tones. Once you've got the two-fingered crab down, we'll move on to the three-fingered crab, which is very similar to the way uh, turntablists use the crossfader. And it's basically a one, two, three, one, two, three action, or more appropriately, one and uh, one and uh, one and uh. It's a triplet. One E N, one E N, one E N, one E N, depending on how fast you're doing the triplet. If we move over to the second key, I want to show you the three fingered triplet crab plus one, which is the one E and a, uh, one E and a. Uh. Okay, now we're going to combine those two ideas, the triplet crab 
and the two-fingered crab across two buttons to create a cool sound that can continue in a rhythmic pattern. We're going to do a two-fingered crab with our second and third fingers on one button, and we're going to add this guy, our first finger, to the triplet crab. We're going to do the two together. So it sounds like this. So in this video, we've learned a few important things. Number one, keep your fingers as close to the buttons as possible. Second, we've learned a two-fingered crab. Third, we've learned a three-finger crab. So, practice and have fun!